Hello, in this video we are going to look at a contract and how I can use the missing clauses spell and the review spell to create an email summary for my client. You know, that's something that I get asked to do quite a bit. All right, so I can get started by clicking on Spellbook in the header, and then I can click over here to run the missing clauses spell. And this is a pretty short contract. It's only about three pages if you include the scope of services. So I would kind of expect there to be a decent amount of stuff that's not here. So let's just see what it came up with. Uh, first is confidentiality. Oh, that's a big one. There's definitely nothing in here about confidentiality. Non-compete, I don't know that I would use a non-compete in a contractor agreement, but I definitely don't see a non-solicitation here. Moving down the list, indemnification and insurance, those are obviously related topics, but again, this is such a short contract that they're just simply not here. Uh, it goes on to have some boilerplate stuff, so compliance with laws and no assignment. So this contract doesn't outline all of the boilerplate in individual sections, but just has them in one paragraph. So I would probably just double check to make sure that those are either in here, and if they're not, decide if we want to try to add them in. All right, the next spell that I'm going to run, of course, is the review spell, and that's what I had mentioned just a minute ago. Now, while that's populating, I'll just mention that, of course, I'm going to go back to that missing clauses spell and pull some of that information in, but let's just see what Spellbook comes up with in terms of the summary that I might send to my client. So it's very conversational in tone, which is great. Uh, it talks about the parties, and then it goes on to talk about the services being in uh, Exhibit A, which is absolutely true. Uh, it talks about the payment terms being 10 grand and how it's going to be paid in two installments, which of course, again, is true and useful to my client. And then it goes on to talk about the ownership of the work product, which, you know, I'm glad that it started out with those three things. I mean, they're the first three things in the contract, but they're also probably the most three parts to this contract, at least for my client to consider. So it goes on to talk about uh, some basic stuff about the agreement effectiveness, but, you know, really these first couple paragraphs up here are really the kind of the meat of this contract in my opinion. And I would probably copy and paste this into my email program and then supplement it with my own knowledge about you know the missing provisions and how we might go about negotiating the agreement and so on.